Hey everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing the MCU2 well the MCU2A slash P, which is just MCU2P or MCU2 slash P respirator, which was used by the Air Force and sometimes the Navy, but primarily the Air Force. Now you might be thinking, if you know your stuff about respirators, you might think, oh, this is just a regular MCU2P, right? But it's not. It's an MCU2AP. Now, the reason being is because it has that nifty little uh, little adapter there for microphones on the bottom there, instead of having one of the uh, VPU or voice projection unit adapters where you just screw it on in the front, like, like the M40s I have. This has a specific adapter for, for I, I suppose, a vehicle crew but also maybe other uses too. Now, I got this mask, I think around $70 out in Utah, like two, a year, almost a year ago, maybe two years ago, maybe. I haven't put enough review on it for a while because I just haven't really thought about making a review. However, I'm making a review now. Uh, you'll notice I got some of that three-colored desert laid out here. This is an old mechanics jumpsuit that was unissued, basically. It was came with the tag when I, when I found it so very clean so I'm using it as a floor mat post the old carpet this looks a lot cooler got the bag there now here's some information about the mask so originally all right you got the MCU2P and looks just like that but with a just a, your average voice diaphragm that similar to the M40 that I have in my other videos okay, so it has two voice diaphragms it has the one on the side the one in the front and then it's got a which you can swap the one on the side for the filter port on the on the left. Now I have it in the right-handed configuration because I'm right-handed, so the filter's on the left for me. So I can if I ever, so if you know if I was in the military and I needed to use it and use a rifle with this mask, I would be able to shoulder the rifle because there again filters on the left and I'm right-handed. Now something about this mask is it has that like I said that uh voice emitter yeah it says voice emitter mic 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 emitter assembly um and these masks came in three sizes small medium and large now they also are, came issued with the mask carrier which is that's what they call the bag right they got the mask itself um with the waterproofing storage bag which I will show you it's in there uh, two C2 canisters, right? Now, it doesn't, mine didn't come with any filters. However, I do have two original C2 filters. Now, these, notice how that filter on that mask is green. These are black, right? These are C2 filters. Do not use these unless you are okay with breathing in chromium. These were recalled after the public found out that these had chromium in them and they were all upset and they were like, okay, government was like, okay, will give them new filters without the chromium. So that's where you have the C2A1 filter. Now, interesting thing about these C2 filters is they came in these tins, all right? Now these tins, all right, this one I think is from about 2009, I believe. If I'm getting that right, 2009 or 2002, I think. This is from, um, let me check around the, on the packaging here. So actually, I'll, I'll talk about this real quick. So, on the canister, it says, do not open this can until ready to use canister. Instructions are to open can, remove the key, because it came with this little key here. Right? And you twist it around and you open it up. Um, so you open it up like that. Uh, you attach the canister to a face piece or hose or connector and check for proper operation and leakage in accordance with prop appropriate, um, yeah, whatever. Uh, so it says mask. Uh, C2 right there. So the camera will focus. Which I thought it will focus. So there we go. So that's what it says on here. Now I believe this one was made in 2009 ish. Because, well, on the filter at least. So, which filter? It came with, it came with this filter. So this is the one that I had originally that came with one of my M40s. This is one uh, came with that tin there. So this one on the side, where does it say? Uh, it says it somewhere.
I don't remember where it says it, but I remember looking at finding it somewhere. So I think it's 2009, 2001, 2002 is when it was made. I don't exactly remember. Um, but it is expired. I can tell you that. Don't use those filters anymore. They're expired. Uh, the ma then it would also come with, then again, right, moving on to other components, uh, came with a clear face piece outsert, which is on the mask right now. Because the mask itself, the lens, I'll get to this in a moment, uh, it's flexible. So, and it came with, yeah, then again, C two C2 canisters. Um, yeah. So here are the differences right here on the Wikipedia between, between the, uh, C2, or not the C2, sorry, the MCU2P and the MCU2APs. The MCU2AP is on the bottom, MCU2P is on the top. Same thing, except waste emitter. Right, moving on to the mask itself. It's a very comfortable mask, actually, because it's made of this, the your average United States military silicone rubber that they used in that time period around the late 80s, 90s, 2000s, up until they replaced it with the Avon C, uh, Avon M50 respirator. So, see, so you got the C2A1 filter here in green. These are safe to use. I've noticed with a lot of these masks, they have a more shallow filter port, so you can see the thread still, even though it's already all the way secured. There's a better look on that, too, on the inside. I mean, on the outside. On the inside, let me move the straps out of the way for you guys. On the inside, you might notice there's... Hold on. Get some lighting. You can see those two little prongs, right? I don't know if you guys can see that. There's two little prongs in there. Now, that connects to, to that, of course, right? So, you got the small little voice diaphragm here, and you have this here. Now an interesting cool thing about this series of masks along with the M40 as well with the way they have their uh, voice diaphragm set up, the way you can swap them out. Most people would say oh you need a specialized tool for it right? Not necessarily all you need is the bag because the bag, you see this? See look. The bag has one of these uh, loops here and that fits just right in there the strap itself can get out of the way I can show you there see how it there see you can turn it and stuff but I'm not going to for the sake of this video we don't have the time anyway so the mask itself that's what it looks like up close it's got strangely one of these little things I don't know what they're called um that hold the uh, XL valve cover on. And whereas on the M40, there's two right here. There's one here and one here. It's got drinking straw. That's what, that's what it looks like, in case you don't know what your average United States military drinking straw looked like from the time period. They use the same adapter for the canteens on this and the M40 and the M17. It's been the same up until they switched the with the M50. I believe at the M50, they changed it um to whatever the avon system was anyway to reinstall it just loop it back around and plug it in this mask in particular was made in 1990 by the company uh, msa or mine mining safety association uh or mine safety association yeah so this one is a medium as you see here, the camera will focus. There you go. Me, M for medium. This one fits me pretty well. It says US right there on the side there. Focus. There we go. It says US there. Now, one thing I've noticed is even though it does seem to fit this relatively perfectly, the outsert up here it says M slash L. So I'm wondering if they have a large variant of this or of this outsert or if they use the medium on the large as well. Moving on, we take this off, right? You'll notice that this, it's flexible. And that's probably why it's yellow over time, because the material that these are made out of tended to yellow over time. 
You'll notice that if you look at like some of the prototype pictures where some of these prototypes were made of all this one material and it's, it's like very yellowed out and it's very foggy. This may be yellowed, but it's still in good enough condition where you can see very clearly through it. Um, now, I wouldn't use this mask as a prepper, mostly because of the material it's made out of. wouldn't do well against blister agents. Um, speaking of the, on the side that we're talking about the material, right? Um, I wouldn't recommend using this for prepping because the blister agents would eat right through this. I mean, yeah, they have this nifty outsert, but that's not going to stop it from leaking down from up here because there's obviously going to be a gap there. Um, yeah, so it's a very relatively lightweight mask for the time. It's very comfortable because it, if it's in your size, because it fits your face, it fits my face really well. Oh, uh, it's fairly comfortable. Um, you know, it's what you can expect for a mask at the time. It's not as comfortable as, say, like, um, the PMK3, where it's got, like, the, all that just straight up soft, very thin rubber. It makes it comfortable. It's not as protective. It's not as durable, but it is more comfortable. If you're, you, most of the time, you have to get a middle ground like this, where this is some more durable than that other mask that I was just mentioning, except the rubber is a different compound, so it wouldn't do as well under blister agents and certain in that aspect, but it's comfortable and durable whereas the other one is was the pmk3 made by russia in, two, in like the early 2000s that one is comfortable but lacks durability you kind of got to balance it out or make it really durable and not as comfortable and when i say comfortable i mean like less rigid the rubber is less rigid mostly because you notice the orange laser cuff on this mask is it's not soft but it's not rigid it's kind of in between so it makes it nice and comfortable being made of that silicon rubber. Um, you can see the right there on the inside there. There's the uh, again sidetracked, but on the inside you can see where the air deflector is. Um, so yeah, it makes a good seal to your face. It seals well to the face as a an um interface seal here. So it's very well made and compared to this being made in the 90s and the what was it the PMK3 being made in 2005, one, at least the one I have. This is the United States military in 1990. Versus, you, you've seen my other video. I mean, my voice sounded way different back then. But the other video with the, with the PMK3, right? The PMK3 looks like it was made in the 80s or the 90s. Like, it looks old. Because the Russians don't have very good... You know, I'm not going to get political. But they're, they don't have very good gear. There's a lot of corruption going on with that. The only thing they have is nukes. Other than that, their gear is absolutely garbage. Alright, moving on to the bag that this comes with. This bag has seen better days. I think some of the straps on it are broken, so I just kind of tangled them up here. The only strap that isn't broken is the main strap here. Someone vandalized it and put V1000 on it because they thought they'd be they're being funny or something. But as a collector, it kind of makes me a little upset. Because it's not how it would be originally. And over here, somebody else also. This must have been owned twice because there's two names on the name tag thing. Uh, and also, this is V1000. So, whoever A N P I A T T is, um, why'd you have to do this to this perfectly good bag? Anyway, moving on. On the inside here, there's a little flap that you can pull up and you can take out the waterproofing bag. So basically, for the sake of the video and because I don't want to have to like undo everything, if you if if comment if YouTube lets me have comments on this video, comment down below if you want to see me open this. I'll make a YouTube short of it. Okay. I'll show you what it looks like. It's pretty basic, but I, I'll give you some history behind it and show you this waterproofing bag. Anyway, you open it up, you take the bag out, undo the bag, and put the mask in the bag. Alright, so on the bag, it says, bag, waterproof, chemical, biological, mask, MCU2 slash P, MCU2, uh, A slash P, right? See that? And that gives you instructions. Anyway. That's that's about it. That's all I have on this mask. Uh, if you like this content, if you want to see more reviews, make sure to leave a like. Make sure to uh, comment. Make sure to if you want to comment. If you want, if I if you have anything to say, 
make sure you comment i will respond as soon as possible uh, please if you want to subscribe if you like content like this subscribe if you want me to continue making videos subscribe because subscribers are what motivate me to make more videos because if there aren't anybody subscribed what's the point in making videos right now i've been studying this stuff for a few years now so if you have any questions make sure to leave a comment i'll answer them if you want me to make another make a video on something leave a comment make a suggestion um i'll possibly probably not but possibly make a youtube short going over some of my collection and i'll ask you guys you can Leave a comment on that short if, if you guys want to see a video on one of those items that I have. I have a few items. Um, I also just recently made a, did a collab with a, a guy named Tactical Airsoft. Um, I was in one of his videos. We reviewed a Car 98K, Air, uh, Airsoft Car 98K from, uh, I think it was s and Armament. Uh, he bought that on eLike. Um, I'll try to leave a link to his channel in either the description or the comment section. I don't know when he's going to post that video, but um but yeah. I made I made a reference to this mask. I, I brought that mask to the video. I said, "Hey, um here's a quick sneak peek." So anyway, I was in that video, helped him out with that video. I had a I had a something that I don't think YouTube would like me showing on this channel. Um but you can definitely go check it out cuz I show something pretty historical on on his channel. Uh then again, Tactical Airsoft is what his channel is. It's it's black, uh, the, um, what is that? How do I phrase this? The profile picture is a black circle with T and A in it, and it's just tactical airsoft, right? I'll, I'll make sure to, to leave a, a link to his channel down below. I think right now he only has one video talking about the begin opening of his channel, but other than that, if, if his video is there, check it out. I don't know when it's going to be posted, though. He hasn't told me yet. Um, he probably will at some point when he, when he does post it, but... Yeah, we, we made a video there. You guys go check that out. Um, go subscribe to him if you guys are more interested in Airsoft content. Which I know some of you probably are. I, I do play Airsoft. I just... I don't want to make any reviews on anything. Because last time I did on my old channel, which I referred to on, my, on his video, it didn't go well. YouTube took him down. Took down that entire channel. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just going to leave it with respirators and other military collectibles uh and if you want to right leave a comment down below i have a pair of red wing iron rangers i know they're not surplus but if you want me to make a review of my red wing iron rangers i've had them for a few months now i'll make a review of them all right if, you, if that's what uh your viewers want um i have what else do i have hmm i think yeah Leave a comment down below if you want to see anything else. Leave leave a like if you like this video. Helps the algorithm out. Helps it reach out to more people so more people can learn about this mask and other stuff. Make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. Because uh, I know like 98% of my viewers that watch this. Like 98% of my viewers are not subscribed. So if you're one of those 98%, please just subscribe. That, there's no harm in it. Just, just hit that button, you know. Um... Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.